Okay, so lipids. This is where we left off uh, last week or the week before. And I'll go over what we've talked about. Okay, so lipids are non-polar molecules. <clears throat> so that means they are normally not very soluble in water, and we'll go over that again when we talk about polarity. But generally, non-polar molecules will be insoluble in water. They will not dissolve. Uh, lipids, uh, any, so any macromolecule that does a biological macromolecule that does not dissolve in water is considered a lipid. We're going to cover two types of lipids. One's called a fatty acid, and the other one is a steroid nucleus, or just steroid. Uh, fatty acids will have carboxylic acids uh, attached to them, uh, and we'll see that that's the first thing we covered when we started this material. Okay, so this is a general classification of lipids. On the left are the fatty acids, uh, on the right the steroids. They do not look anything alike, but what makes them similar is how many carbons they have, and the numbers of carbons. Lipids have lots of carbons that uh, suggest they are nonpolar. I said there is a relationship between the number of carbons per oxygen. If the ratio of carbons to oxygen is greater than three to one, a molecule probably is nonpolar. And then if you look in this, these diagrams up here, the fatty acids, every point on this zigzag line is a carbon. And you can see there's lots of carbons there. And you can see the steroid over here also has lots of carbons. Those, that makes them a nonpolar and therefore lipids. Uh, we first started covering fatty acids, um, and there's different classes of them. Uh, there's waxes. I'll go over them in particular in a few minutes. The triglycerides, soap. A very uh, topical, important subject these days, and phospholipids. And then when we talk about the steroids, really we're just going to talk about a uh, very small class. The main uh, steroid is cholesterol, uh, and then we'll talk more about steroid hormones. Okay, fatty acids are found in triglycerides, waxes, soaps, and phospholipids. So we'll be covering generally what a fatty acid is, and then uh, see how they fit as triglycerides, waxes, soap, and phospholipids. Okay, and then when we talk about steroids, uh, we'll study a little bit about cholesterol and then see how they relate to things like testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, uh, corticoid, steroids, uh, etc. Okay, first of all, the fatty acids. Fatty acids are long chain carboxylic acids that have between 12 and 18 carbons in the chain. Uh, they will have an even number of carbons. There are two types, saturated fatty acids and unsaturated fatty acids. Saturated, anything that's saturated, like saturated hydrocarbons, alkanes, and saturated fatty acids, will have nothing but single bonds between the carbons. Unsaturated saturated fatty acids similar to unsaturated hydrocarbons like alkenes, will have at least one double bond between the carbons. 
we will talk first of all about saturated fatty acids and then unsaturated. One of the physical characteristics of saturated fatty acids is they have high, higher melting points than unsaturated fats. Saturated fats tend to be solids at room temperature, and unsaturated fatty acids tend to be liquids at room temperature. And what we're going to look at now is why that is. Why are saturated fats tend to be solids at room temperature versus unsaturated being liquids at room temperature. Okay, there's four, there's, uh, on this slide here, there are four saturated fatty acids. Uh, just a couple things, just keep bear, bear in mind when we look at this slide. All right, these are the carbons, the points, this is the carboxylic acid. Okay, so that's why they're called acids, is because they have carboxylic acids in them. We often have symbolized this thing right here as COOH. Okay, uh, the key thing to notice here is that the longer the chain is, the, the higher the melting point. So there's a relationship between the length of the chain, carbon chain, and the melting point. Now remember what melting is. Melting is the breaking apart of the molecules from each other. It's not the breaking apart of the molecules. For instance, when you, when you uh, melt ice, what you're doing is you're breaking apart the water molecules from each other and they become less connected to each other. All right, so what is the cause of this, uh, why longer chains have a higher melting point. The way you kind of think about it is the longer the chains are, the more they interact. And I suggest this sort of like spaghetti. Um, suppose you have a bowl of spaghetti and a bowl of macaroni, both fully cooked. Uh, which is easier to separate into the individual noodles? Okay the spaghetti noodles would be harder to separate it because they're all tangled up together. That's because they have more interactions. Uh, so it requires more energy to pull them apart than the macaroni, which are smaller. Now if we go back to the slides, we'll see the, long, the, uh, the longer the chain, that the chains are longer and they can flop around just like spaghetti and they tangle up. And the more interactions the carbons can have with each other, the more they can increase their London dispersion forces. And we, uh, and I had said that the increased way to increase one of the ways to increase London dispersion forces is to increase the surface area or the interaction between molecules, not polar molecules. And therefore, this is how these guys, why these guys have higher melting points, because they tangle up and are harder to pull apart, and you need more energy, higher temperatures to do that. Okay, so this again shows what it's I just talked about longer chain carbocarbons, including fatty acids, are like spaghetti noodles. Longer chain, the more tangling, and the stronger London dispersion forces. The shorter chains uh, have less tangling, weaker London dispersion forces, and thus are easier to pull apart. Things with higher melting points need more energy to pull apart. 
That's because they have more interactions. So longer chains have higher melting points. Okay, now let's look at unsaturated fats. You'll notice in these guys is that they have at least one double bond between the carbons. This is a double bond, and this is a double bond, and this is a double bond. And this group, we call them monounsaturated. That's because they have only one double bond. And this group down here, there is at least uh, two double bonds. Here's two, here's three, and here's four. Again, if you notice, here's the melting points. The longer the chain, this guy has 16 and this has 18, this has a higher melting point than this guy here. For the same reason, it has the tangling effect occurs even in the unsaturated. Okay, now this next slide, we compare the fatty acids with the same number of carbons, but different number of double bonds. In the top case, steric acid, all of them, by the way, all of these have 18 carbons, uh, but if you look, they all have different melting points. Animal fat has a melting point of 69 degrees Celsius, which is about 170 degrees Fahrenheit. So it takes quite a amount of heat to um, melt these guys, uh, to melt these. Just by adding one double bond, in the case of oleic acid, you have decreased the melting point from 69 Fahrenheit Celsius to 13. That's going from 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Now you only need about 55 degree Fahrenheit. Just by adding one double bond, you, you decrease the melting point by almost 100 degrees. Okay, in the third case, linoleic, linoleic acid, you add another double bond, so now it has two, and you decrease its melting point even more, another 20 degrees Fahrenheit, or almost 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so oleic acid is a liquid at room temperature. Room temperature is about 20 degrees Fahrenheit Celsius. So oleic, linoleic, and linolenic acid are all liquids at room temperatures. And, that's, and it looks like that's because they have a double bond. So what causes the double bond? What, what does the double bond do to lower the melting? Okay, so notice as the number of double bonds increase, the melting point decreases. This means interactions have decreased in the molecules with more double bonds. Why? Well, it's essentially the double bonds make the chain stiffer. It's not, can't wiggle around and tangle as well. It's kind of like having uncooked spaghetti. It's easier to pull apart uncooked spaghetti than it is cooked spaghetti. That's because there's less tangling. So uh, molecules that have double bonds are stiffer and they're easier to pull apart. Therefore, lower melting points. Okay. Uh, I'm going to cover waxes and then uh, I'm going to just. Uh, we're going to move, uh, stop and move on to the next uh, little video and I'll talk about triglycerides, etc. Uh, but let's end up in this section here, which is waxes. Okay, waxes are esters of fatty acids and long chain alcohols. We'll go back and review esters uh, when uh, I talk about when I review esters again. And you'll see them in a little bit when I talk about triglyceride. 
Uh, so waxes have lots and lots of carbons. That makes them very variable, very, very insoluble. Okay, so what they do, why we have them in nature, is they protect things from getting water in on them, like uh, animal fur will have some sort of animal wax, or our ears, ear wax, it prevents water from getting in our ears. That's because water is, is repelled from the hydrophobic nonpolar waxes. Okay, some plants use it actually to help water not get out of the plant, like succulent plants found in uh, the desert. Uh, cactus, they have really hard coated layer leaves which are wax covered and what the waxes, wax cover do is that the water that's inside the plant wants, needs to stay inside the plant and uh, the way it stays in the plant is the wax keeps it in. If you were to take away the wax, the water inside the plant would evaporate and the plant would shrivel up and die. So what the wax does is when the water starts to evaporate, it hits the wax and then it gets pushed back inside the water. I mean the plant leaf. Here are three examples of waxes. You can see bee wax uh, and it's these three. Well, the main thing you know, should notice about these is, first of all, this is an ester group. It's a carboxyl that's not at the end. In the fatty acids, this was at the end of the chain. Okay. These have this carboxyl in the middle of the chain. The other thing to notice is how many carbons they have. There's 15 over here and 30, so this is 42 carbons long. Okay, this one is 25, uh, 55, 56 carbons long. So. These are very, very hydrophobic because they have lots and lots of carbons. Okay, so I'm going to stop here and uh, I will do a small video, I mean the next video, on triglycerides.